stuff it into the center of the potato and bake them with the skins on. When they're done, cut them in two. Serve them on the half shell just like that. Serve them in slices when company calls. The more company you have, the thinner you cut the slices. If your mother-in-law calls, give her a beak piece like that. Now the second tool in the set is known as the garnishing knife. Everything you cut with this must come out fancy. Watch this, please. You cut down, you turn the potato, and then you cut through the edge. First one way, and then the other. Sweet potatoes cut like this. Drop them into a little batter of pancake flour and fry them. When they're golden brown, sprinkle molasses on them. Serve them with strips of bacon for breakfast while they're delicious. Here's beet, you pickle them, and carrot, you steam or cream them. In making the original French fried potato, cut them in thick slices. Put them one on top of each other, cross cut the slices, and you'll never eat a French fry any other way. The potato cut like this will not absorb the fat because they're garnished around. Pineapples cut for your pineapple and cheese salad, cut them the same way. Here is one, and this is a dandy. Cuts any thickness or any size. Open it for a thick slice, close to the top for a thin slice. Saratoga chips, you can make them for three or four pennies a pound. Just pull the blade towards you like this. If you want the slices thicker than this, open the blade, there's a thick slice. Shoestrings for your Friday fish dinner, cut them down like this. Chop them up for your vegetable soup. What this knife is really intended for is for cutting the cabbage. You know the old-fashioned board, how you rip and tear, sometimes nipping the ends off your fingers? Lay it flat and pull it lightly towards you over the cabbage. The weight of the knife across the cabbage is all that's necessary. Why, ladies, when you get slaw cut as fine as this, you'll certainly appreciate eating it. The crowning feature of the set is the cutter that I'm going to show you now. This is known as the Champion Vegetable Mincing Knife and Noodle Cutter. Now, when you want to make some real fine noodles at home, you roll the dough out like this. Dip this into a little flour so it doesn't stick to the dough, and as you roll it over the dough, that will cut the noodles in long strips ten at a time. Did you ever try to chop up a little nuts for cake? Well, I've seen ladies chop nuts and the nuts land up on the ceiling. Sometimes you chop the ends off your fingers. When you want to chop up a little nuts for cake, cooked meat, clams for chowder, soup greens to throw into your soup, making a little pepper or chicken hash is just a few strokes rolling it up and down. Why, here is without a doubt the meanest thing in the world to cut parsley. Put that in a grinder. You really grind it too fine. This machine, instead of crushing the parsley, cuts it quick, clean, and dry, leaving every bit of the juice and every bit of the flavor. Now, to clean this machine, you press the button. Rinse it out in a little water. When you're through using it, hang it up and let it dry. Here's one here that every lady should have in her home, known as the Parisian scoop. You lay it flat, once to the right, once to the left. When you scoop them out, you'll get a perfect round little ball. You can pot roast these, cut them out of cheese or cut them out of butter. When you're serving a fruit cocktail in the summertime, take your fresh cantaloupe, scoop them out like this, Mix them with apples, pears, and watermelons. Makes a delicious fruit cocktail served with a little cracked ice like you see here. But here are the two ladies. If you ever do get it, you'll thank the day you've seen this demonstration. When you press, it locks. It's like a pair of human hands. Reach in the oven and take the biscuits out of the oven. Ever take the hot potatoes out of the oven and burn yourself on the elbow? A roast chicken out of the oven, a piece of meat out of the pot, spinach, asparagus out of the water, why around canning season when you're preserving the fruits, to take the hot fruit jars out of the water like that? That machine is worth dollars to you. 
And here's another one that I really know you'll enjoy having in your kitchen, known as the safety grater. No doubt you're familiar with the old-fashioned grater. I've seen ladies take a grater and rip the knuckles off. When you want to grate up potatoes for delicious potato pancakes, this has a smooth, flat edge, impossible to cut yourself. <laughs> Just like you were washing clothes, you rub it up and down, and you really grate your vegetables real fine, retaining all the flavors and all the juices. Bread crumbs for, your, for when you're serving veal cutlets or anything like that. You want a little bread crumbs to fry your fish in? Well, there's the greatest proposition in the world. Use that for coconut, cheese, or horse ready. When you're through with it, just hit it down like that. That knocks all the food out. Rinse it out in a little water and hang it up and let it dry. Now, here is a stone made of carborundum and sapphire quartz, which is made purposely to keep these knives sharp. When they get dull, a few strokes over the edge like this, and you can put a keen cutting edge on it. If you have a dull knife or a dull pair of scissors, an old sickle or a sigh, a lawnmower, cleaver, an axe, there's a tool that will really put an edge on the knife so the knife will really cut for you. I just want to give you an idea of how sharp that knife really is when you sharpen it with that stone. Ladies, I've seen some of you try to open up cans. Now, there's a can of Campbell's baked beans. I've seen ladies open up a can and you poke a hole in it, go round the top, hippity hop, and your finger slips. Let me show you a real proposition. Look, lay it on the can, lift up the safety, and turn the key. That locks itself on the can. No harder than you were winding up your watch. Wind up the key and that'll cut the top off of the can slick and smooth. Notice how the end raises itself up in the air so you can lift the lid off, giving you a clean, smooth edge. Now that can be used for sardine cans, square cans or round cans, exactly the same way. Now this tool here, my dear friends, needs no introduction. This will save you on an average of 20 to $30 every year you use it as a peeling knife. Here's a grater for cheese, coconut, or horseradish, a fish scaler for scaling your fish, and when you're coring your apple, it's just a slight twist of the wrist, and there's the apple core. There's one more tool that I want you to see, and I want you to watch this one very closely. Many a times when you're baking a pie, you have a pudding in the oven, I've seen ladies wrap a towel around your hand, and many a times you burn your fingers. Hook this onto the pot like this and lift the hot pots off the top of the stove. You've got a pie pan in the oven? Catch a hold of the pie pan like this while you couldn't get it off with a team of horses. This will positively lift 100 pounds. There's a pail of water weighs 50 or 60 pounds. That's the way you pick it up. But there's one more tool, I'll be all through and I'll be finished. Oh, now the next tool and the last one is what they call the Sarah Bernhard Cutter. This was invented by the head chef of the Imperial Hotel in the city of Berlin, Germany. You place the screw into the center of the vegetable. Twist the vegetable until the threads catch a hold, then you wind this up. You keep winding until you utilize the whole potato. The faster you turn, the quicker the slices. Why, ladies, here's a machine for slicing onions. The first onion that you slice with this cutter, you bless the day, you've got a hold of it. Every slice cut exactly the same thickness. Every slice cut the same size. In making what they call a rosette, pull the vegetable out like this. Pin the ends together with a toothpick. Drop that potato into the hot fat and fry it. That will come out like a donut golden brown. If you're serving a nice fish dinner, a little parsley goes in the center with the fish all around it. Makes a very appetizing dish. Did you ever try to slice onions with a knife? You know how you get one thick slice and one thin slice? Run the knife through the center. That will separate each slice individual. 
almost like magic, there is every slice cut exactly the same thickness and the same size. Wouldn't you like to have a set like this in your kitchen? Why, of course you would. Now, don't forget, attend this theater every week and receive this 12-piece fascinating... Ladies and gentlemen, the management of this theater takes great pleasure in making this announcement. To each lady attending this theater each week, you'll receive absolutely free a fascinating 12-piece kitchen cutlery set, one piece each time. It is really interesting and amazing to know how you can prepare your meals in an appetizing and pleasing manner. There's an old saying, and a true one, that what is pleasing to the eye is bound to be pleasing to the appetite. I'm going to demonstrate this set to you, and I want you to watch it very closely. The first cutter that I'm going to show you, now this first one is known as the Parisian cutter. Wind it through the potato like a corkscrew. When the cutter appears on the opposite side, pull the cutter out. Place the handle in the center and twist it out. This is what they call a French curl. When you fry these, they come out like doughnuts, nice and brown. Serve them with your steaks or pot roast them. Unwind it, there's two curls out of the one potato. Tomorrow morning for breakfast, Wind a little strip of bacon around the potato and serve them with bacon and eggs. They're delicious. Different colored vegetables, wind them together. And Oh, hey, helps if I turn on those microphones. Hey there, car guy. Um, welcome, everyone. Uh, International Bacon Day. So, uh, going to be doing frittata. And I was thinking of doing a quiche. Uh, quiche, maybe. Actually, quiche is probably what's written down in the cards as far as coming up. But, uh... Decided last minute here that I didn't want to do a crust. So we'll do a frittata and do that in cast iron. And I'm going to do an apple and bacon crumble in another one of my cast irons. Uh, got a couple apples here. That's not enough. We'll see what that is once I get cleaned up. I'm worried. This guy may be a little past due. We'll see. Um, but either way, I have apples outside, so if we don't got enough there, there's more available. Uh, got these cute little guys on the farmer's market today. Um, I actually, uh, went there and got my weekly flowers, or bi-weekly flowers, and, uh, she just handed me these. She's like, I got too many of these right now. Take these. Um, uh, so let's open one of these up. The other one I'm going to save for. Well, let's open this guy up. The other one's going to save for tomorrow. Just cut this sort of nasty end off here. Oh yeah, that's going to be tasty. Maybe I should save some of that for with, yeah, I'm going to save some of this for with the, the dish. Let's put this away for a little bit now. That's pretty enough that I want it for the plate. 
Um, so bacon. I pulled out one of the uh, cured bellies that I did. We're gonna slice that up and see how that does. This is the uh, 0.3 cure with uh, aromatics. Which was surprisingly not my favorite of the bunch. But we're close. I thought the aromatics, while nice, um, muddied the flavor. I think I wanted to go with just a cleaner, straight bacon. So, I do some slice in here you can see it's nice and clean red that cure A little thick in the bottom there. Put a little thick in the top this time. Got a special theme going with Stream Raiders right now. They got the Badlands, so it's all new maps. All new encounters need a parchment. And we're just going to do all of this up. Oh, I need to get my oven going. Four hundred. I do have a pot going behind me here. Um, that is a uh, new hummingburger bird uh, nectar. They are running low. And it's just cooling down at this point. And I'll deal with that after the stream. And that's what I'd call some streaky bacon. It's a little thick. I think that deserves a photo. I mean, home cured bacon.
Nice. So you get this going on pan here. Let's see, can I do these three wide? No. I can do them. Uh, do them two wide this way. Yeah, that's going to be the ticket. Give you guys a little of this background music too. I always forget to turn that on beginning of the stream. I have it off because I have the enter. sim world all right well enjoy thank you for the lure and I don't know if I want to do two pans right now or not I am quite well uh, doing quite lovely we got I mean, how can I not be doing well? <laughs> yeah, let's do all of it. This, I'm gonna save for some other project. Um, it is belly fat. I don't know. I've got straight up pieces of pork belly still that aren't even cured. <laughs> um, we'll give this a chop up and save this as ends and bits. That's all, it's like 90% fat. Even more so than If you get bored of the uh, train sim, uh, Stream Raiders has got a uh, special theme this week and is uh, doing different maps. Yeah, Pancetta or Prosciutto or yeah. Um, the uh, College Cafe, granted, Culinary Institute of America College Cafe, but uh, used to have bagouts, so big fresh that day, like ultimate 
true French baguette with French butter, salted, and just pancetta. Or not pancetta, but uh, uh, prosciutto. It is just ridiculous. It's so simple, but so good. And I don't know why my earbud is not working very well tonight. Are you guys getting this bad sound off the mic? Or is it just me? I'm thinking it's my uh, headset not getting everything. Because I am wearing single earbud these days. Okay. With the other ends and pieces. Throw you lovely five last slices over here. Wait for that oven to finish heating up. Cut ourselves some leeks and clean our knife and cutting board. smoke alarm it actually is pretty sensitive I mean those who are watching me from the very very beginning will know I have set it off several times I'm, I'm now trained to uh, close that door Nice, Kirby. With you, I'm just sort of waiting for the uh, next messages to be addicted and take my money. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you have. I maybe you're all about the more traditional ones with your doing building on stream.
Let's throw the bacon in the oven here. Set a 20 minute timer. No, it's a set 30 minutes. At least I don't think I... I'm, I'm relatively certain that I can't. But let's take a look here. Nope, lets me change uh, the volume on like 20 different things, but, uh, and there's a uh, downloadable for the captains, which they're hoping to release to the public in the future. Um, and so I'm running it as a program on my thing rather than out of the browser and uh, so it gives me graphics option and some stuff like that but it, it's mostly just sound controls I think I'm gonna use this smaller guy tonight. Save this other one for future projects. If you didn't see earlier, I got this beautiful guy. I decided to, I was gonna eat him here on stream, but so I'm gonna save him for garnish with the plate here. Cut that above that mark there and definitely want some of the green but not the heavy green actually we can save the core of that that's still pretty good I am not certain she told me but um, I quickly forgot <laughs> she does several different melons she's also the I went and bought flowers from her and uh, she's like I got too many of these here have these she gave me two of these of course that could have been it's usually an exchange of one amount for the flowers and she usually gives me more back than she charges. I think she gave me the melons this week and charged me full price. dirty out guys and we'll rinse the rest they're usually pretty good when they're that small um, and I mean she's usually pretty good about what she's growing well her whole family but it's a three generation women running this farm So we'll just do a thin slice on the bias 
for our leaks. Leaks can be fibery, so going to make sure we're thin and going against the upward mode plant because whatever fiber and connective is going this way. Got that battle, I heard that. Let's do our first battle of the evening. See how we do here. This could be rough, just the two of us. <laughs> Then again, Archer, good choice. <laughs> Just gonna be shooting arrows at him until, I don't know. This could not end well, though. Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't switch the window for you guys. You didn't see all that loveliness this time. Sorry, Kirby. We'll keep, we'll try that one once more. Ooh, I get a skin. Uh, so going to repeat that same mode. Oh yes. Uh, we have different layout of mobs this time. They seem to be a little bit all over the place this time. Uh, we got four level ones this time instead of some higher level guys. You put in a Valiant fight there, uh, Kirby. Uh, you were definitely the last one standing uh, it took a while for the mob to realize that there was only an archer left sitting there and pinging it for one point <laughs> over and over. So we'll go back, give you another 30 minutes there, a chance to uh, add five, six players to the field. Oops, that's not what we want. There we go. We at least took out one of the two. Actually, you took out one of the two before we even got over there. And... The second one, I tanked down to about 30%, and then you were just sitting there shooting arrows at it for one point of damage. <laughs> Oops. 
Yep. And it gets into planning of which ones you want to do first. And some of them have different advantages. Like, I don't think you start off with a flag, flag, flag bearer. Um, but uh, that helps all the other characters in the bunch. Maybe we'll get uh, someone to stop in here a little bit. I've got a couple of people now that are rather addicted. Uh, Entropies, really hooked. Yeah. Gonna get this slowly sauteing. I don't know which one do I want to use for which. Let's do the big guy for a frittata. Throw a little butter in the pan. Get some water for myself. Got some kichi squash and asparagus. 
for Sunday. It's gonna be a good dinner. Got some uh, whitefish for Sunday as well. Um, trying to remember what it was. It was a flatfish, whitefish. I want to say it was flounder. Not sure. Uh, but it was on sale. So I'm gonna be doing that. Along with, it'll be national. Um, oh, what's the name of the nut? Macadamia nut. Day on Sunday. So we'll do macadamia nut crested flatfish with um, a pudding cake for dinner, a roasted banana and uh, macadamia nut pudding cake. It's actually a uh, African recipe. We'll see if I can turn it out into a decent looking cake. The one they have pictured with this is not all that breedy. So maybe a bit of a challenge. We'll see. Could be fun. Well, it's always fun. We need the zest of this for, oh, this is for the, this isn't for tonight. This is for Sunday. But we can use this guy. No, I didn't just pull out the same thing. I'm gonna juice this guy, make a little bit of a quick uh, vinaigrette. sweat away. Actually, that's a bit too much juice, so I'm going to reduce that. The top was not in the flame thingy properly. I don't know what they call those. They help distribute the gas. 
but this was for you. <coughs> Take a look at our bacon. I'm gonna give that another, whoa. Yeah, I'm gonna give that another two minutes. Four minutes. The ones on bottom are looking pretty good. Maybe a little overdone, one or two of them, but all the rust on the other pan aren't there, so. I like my bacon crispy. And both of these recipes are gonna work better with crispy bacon. Let's wait on chopping up the apples. We need everything else ready for the crumble before that. You do want to essentially melt these leeks. You want to cook them down. Put a place for our bacon to set and cool down. I guess I could have done lard with these guys since we're doing bacon, but it's sort of one of the things with bacon is um, everything's better with bacon, but there's a point when it just becomes bacon. <laughs> I don't want to leave those in there. Let's take these out for sure, though. These guys are looking like twice as cooked as the other ones. So we'll set those aside there. And give these other guys... We're going to give those... Another five minutes. Sort of wishing, well, maybe I can find one. Maybe I got a fresh tomato. Um, gonna do a little 
fresh uh, orange vinaigrette, uh, arugula salad for on top of the frittata. So I'm thinking, a couple, th couple pieces of tomato? I don't know. Maybe that's too much. It's been a while since I've done a frittata. I enjoy frittatas. I used to make them a lot more. Um, than I do now. So the one thing that streaming has done, welcome back Baroness, uh, is uh, getting me doing actual cooking and recipes and longer ones. This is sort of a quick one for doing for uh, night. Welcome Baroness, how you doing this evening? Hopefully the games of paladins treating you well. Nice. Chicken pies at Popeyes are great. I love me some chicken pot pie. That guy got a little crispy. The rest of these are on the crispy side, but pretty good. Nice. What, what was it? The city, just everything? Did you throw something interesting in there this time? Did you make it special somehow? To share it with someone special. Good food, a lot of it's uh, good ambiance, good company, good experiences, good memories. Interesting. But yeah, that would definitely mean you uh, cooked that chicken down and broke down all the stuff that... Oh yeah. It's always better with the pieces that need to break down too, because those are the real flavorful, flavorful bits. Nice. Yeah, that's a good hack. I need me a mixer. Welcome back, Kirby. I think we got some other help today. I, I, I think I heard a couple other characters being placed. <laughs> nice. <coughs> well, we're just finishing up bacon. We got our leeks going here. They'll be uh, pretty much wrapping up our frittata, other than making it. And I'm going to start in on the crumble now that I have bacon for the topping, which some good crispy bacon for on top. That was a little bit further than than I wanted. I should have probably evenly distributed that bacon a little bit better because I have a feeling the rest of this isn't going to be nearly as dark. That's looking good though.
Welcome, Entry. Saw you play, placing uh, characters there. Hopefully you're having a lovely night, morning, whatever it shall be for you. I forget what part of the world you're in. I'm gonna turn the heat down on those leaks. Yes, the power of bacon. Welcome back, Myth. Good, good. We're gonna let this cool down a little bit here. I'm gonna pull these other crispier guys off of the sheet pan. That guy got crispy. That may be too crispy. Yeah. Eh. Is there such a thing? Yeah. That one's too far. I'm gonna need a pair of tongs for that. My hands are not nearly as asbestos coated as they used to be. Yes, it is. This is the 3% cure. With aromatics. So this had bay and herbs. Yeah, very happy. Um, as I was saying, this is the one with aromatics. So um, I like the one without aromatics, aromatics slightly better. Um, I thought it was a little bit cleaner. I think the uh, herbs maybe muddied things up a little bit. Yummy, yummy. Getting my leeks back here. And turn the heat off of that entirely.
take an oven down to 350. And kill one of the mics here so I can turn the fan on. Entropy here to save the day. Good stuff. So, photos of that will be with on Instagram, obviously, later on. Um, let's start with that. Let's do the topping first. sugar and flour <laughs> Kirby I missed that earlier yes bacon mmm bacon This way you guys can actually see it this time. Let's give this another shot. and the flag carrier. Uh, on to map two of Badlands. Ooh. Flag bearer squirrels. Thank you. Gold. Thank you. Um, let's see. I think we're going to go with the quicker route here. Yeah. What do we got here? Animation. What is all this back here? Is that just, it's just a landscape? Okay. All right. Looks like there's only one unit so far. Back to this. Back to cooking. Sugar. 
flour. Mix those up pretty good here to begin with. You got some graham cracker cookies or digestives, something along that line. You can throw that in here. That'll be great. I'm going to turn the music up slightly. I will leave that where it was. Uh, we'll turn it up here. There we go. It's too loud for anyone. Let me know. I just want it in the background. Why don't you guys still hear what I'm doing too? I'm just gonna zest the lemon in there. So what time is it for you right now, Kirby? It's got to be like four in the mer morning. Eh, morning. Word station. Um, for you there in the UK. We won't use the juice from this guy. We'll just throw him in the fridge for now. Still got our orange over here nice. We'll turn the heat off on that. That's getting nice and thick, reduced. And throw some peanuts in there. Okay, so it's not... <laughs> it's late, but it's... Do a quarter cup of oats here too, just to make sure everyone's happy. It's got oats. Nice. Welcome, Neff. Bacon. I'm gonna take some of these crispier guys, layer them up. I think we need a little bit more than that. Yeah, I guess. I mean, very few people in the culinary industry keep normal hours either. Most of them wake up at like two in the afternoon. We'll do another three strips of bacon here. These guys aren't, these guys are a little bit more chew than crisp. Ooh, I need to save that fat while it's still liquid, too. Yeah, I don't want to throw it back in that jar. That jar's 
getting a little nasty. It's almost a pint of bacon fat. <laughs> I mean, it's there, there's not a lot of room left in there. Give me that. That's a good. Oh. Nine, ten ounces. Are there any measurements on the outside of this guy? Some of these guys used to have measurements. No. That would be good for cooking in the future here. So we got this loveliness. Let's give this a one more toss before you add the butter in there. So we got oats, peanuts, bacon along with brown sugar little flour let's add spices um, cinnamon nutmeg I don't have any ground clove or anything like that a quarter teaspoon in there. Some fresh grated nutmeg. Down low where the fan doesn't blow it out of the bowl. Oh, and lemon zest in there, too. And actually, I'm going to add a little salt, because I add salt to everything. But I add some black pepper in there, too. That's going to help with those baking spices. Not a ton, just a little bit. And butter.
trying to coat all this butter. But not necessarily smash it up at all. It smells lovely with all those spices in there. That cinnamons, nutmegs. Smelling lovely. I think I'm gonna try and grab another apple here. And let me see, I think I've got a delivery out front. Yep, I have a delivery. So, take my apron off here, and I will be back in a moment. Give you my AFK screen while I, uh, I'm gonna go grab an apple off one of the trees back there and uh, pick up my package. Be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, the management of this theater takes great pleasure in making this announcement. To each lady attending this theater each week, you'll receive absolutely free a fascinating 12-piece kitchen cutlery set, one piece each time. It is really interesting and amazing to know how you can prepare your meals in an appetizing and pleasing manner. There's an old saying, and a true one, that what is pleasing to the eye is bound to be pleasing to the appetite. I'm going to demonstrate this set to you, and I want you to watch it very closely. The first cutter that I'm going to show you, now this first one is known as the Parisian cutter. Wind it through the potato like a corkscrew. When the cutter appears on the opposite side, pull the cutter out. Place the handle in the center and twist it out. This is what they call a French curl. When you fry these, they come out like doughnuts, nice and brown. Serve them with your steaks or pot roast them. Unwind it, there's two curls out of the one potato. Tomorrow morning for breakfast, Wind a little strip of bacon around the potato and serve them with bacon and eggs. They're delicious. Different colored vegetables, wind them together and you get the two colors. Here's a little trick cut. Split the curl halfway through the center. If you're making a shrimp salad and you happen to run short of shrimp, mix these in with the regular shrimp. On my word, you couldn't tell the difference until you start to eat them. Now the rest of the potato, you stuff it. We'll call this a little chicken. We'll call this here some hamburger. You might have a little meat that's been laying in the ice box for a few days. Chop the meat up fine, season it highly, stuff it into the center of the potato and bake them with the skins on. When they're done, cut them in two. Serve them on the half shell just like that. Serve them in slices when company calls. The more company you have, the thinner you cut the slices. If your mother-in-law calls, give her a beak piece like that. Now the second tool in the set is known as the garnishing knife. Everything you cut with this must come out fancy. Watch this please. You cut down, you turn the potato, and then you cut through the edge. First one way and then the other. Sweet potatoes cut like this. Drop them into a little batter of pancake flour and fry them. When they're golden brown, sprinkle molasses on them. Serve them with strips of bacon for breakfast while they're delicious. Here's beets, you pickle them, and carrots, you steam or cream them. In making the original French fried potato, cut them in thick slices. Put them one on top of each other, Cross-cut the slices and you'll never eat a French fry any other way. The potato cut like this will not absorb the fat because they're garnished around. Pineapples cut for your pineapple and cheese salad, cut them the same way. Here is one and this is a dandy. Cuts any thickness or any size. Open it for a thick slice, close to the top for a thin slice. Saratoga chips, 
You can meet them for three or four pennies a pound. Just pull the blade towards you like this. If you want the slice as thicker than this, open the blade, there's a thick slice. Shoe strings for your Friday fish dinner, cut them down like this. Chop them up for your vegetable soup. What this knife is really intended for is for cutting the cabbage. You know the old-fashioned board, how you rip and tear, sometimes nipping the ends off your fingers? Lay it flat and pull it lightly towards you over the cabbage. The weight of the knife across the cabbage is all that's necessary. Why, ladies, when you get slaw cut as fine as this, you'll certainly appreciate eating it. The crowning feature of the set is the cutter that I'm going to show you now. This is known as the Champion Vegetable Mincing Knife and Noodle Cutter. Now, when you want to make some real fine noodles at home, you roll the dough out like this. Dip this into a little flour so it doesn't stick to the dough, and as you roll it over the dough, that will cut the noodles in long strips, ten at a time. Did you ever try to chop up the little nuts for cake? Well, I've seen ladies chop nuts and the nuts land up on the ceiling. Sometimes you chop the ends off your fingers. When you want to chop up a little nuts for cake, cooked meat, clams for chowder, soup greens to throw into your soup, making a little pepper or chicken hash is just a few strokes rolling it up and down. Why, here is without a doubt the meanest thing in the world to cut parsley. Put that in a grinder, you really grind it too fine. This machine, instead of crushing the parsley, cuts it quick, clean, and dry, leaving every bit of the juice and every bit of the flavor. Now, to clean this machine, you press the button. Rinse it out in a little water. When you're through using it, hang it up and let it dry. Here's one here that every lady should have in her home known as the Parisian scoop. You lay it flat, once to the right, once to the left. When you scoop them out, you'll get a perfect round little ball. You can pot roast these, cut them out of cheese or cut them out of butter. When you're serving a fruit cocktail in the summertime, take your fresh cantaloupe, scoop them out like this, Mix them with apples, pears, and watermelons. Makes a delicious fruit cocktail served with a little cracked ice like you see here. But here are the two ladies. If you ever do get it, you'll thank the day you've seen this demonstration. When you press, it locks. It's like a pair of human hands. Reach in the oven and take the... Okay. And I'm back. Bach. I'm not hearing music now. So I hope you guys can hear me. It looks like you can. <laughs> All right. So I went and picked up a couple more apples off of the tree. Trees. There's a couple different types of apples here. Thank you, Entropy. Um, these are uh, what are Sonoma County are known for. These are grab and seen apples. These are your pie apple. These are great for that a um, little on the tart side for eating on their own but they're not bad they're better than say one of these guys as far as tartness and yeah I definitely need to refresh my audio stuff here and give me a moment I'm not hearing anything out of my earphones or headphone my earbud there we go. That's a little bit better. Had uh, three boxes waiting for me out there. 
I bought a whole bunch of sugar and on my beginning of the month. I, I have a tendency to keep a shopping cart going until the beginning of the month. And uh, so I'm getting those beginning of the month shopping lift items. Spices away. Let's see if any of these got worms in them, which is a definite issue with our trays. I definitely picked at least two, if not three, to get those four that I tossed on the ground as, eh, they got bugs in them. Looks like we're out of the, looks like my neighbors stole all of the uh, pink ones this year. Those are gorgeous. Uh, if you dive deep on my Instagram, you might find them. But we have one tree that has a oh, pink flesh. They're just gorgeous. So we're gonna have a backyard apple crumble tonight. It's the first apples I've pulled off of those trees this year. My uh, neighbors pretty much got all of them this year. I think he's a little cooped up and decided to trim all the trees and trim the vines and do half a gazillion other projects and space between our homes. Because streaming is where we go to complain about our neighbors, right? <laughs> How's everyone doing tonight? Looks like we lucked out here. These guys are all relatively bug free. Awesome, Dumation. Try anything new lately? Any new food adventures? I'm doing pretty good. Having a nice relaxed evening here. Celebrating International Bacon Day. I mean, what can be bad about that? And we got some beautiful bacon of Anyone hasn't seen that already here, go uh, give you a good close up here. My home cured belly here. Gonna leave the skins on and just chop them small and fine so that they don't add a huge 
much texture. Off to store you go tomorrow, Entropy. Well, if you have to take off, thank you for joining. Oh, yeah. Oh. I just tend to have bacon around <laughs> myself. I've got packaged bacon on top of having my own bacon here at home. need to get more apparently not getting enough for both of you oops But you have a proper amount of bacon. I mean, I'm not 800 pounds yet. Battle. I'm gonna finish these apples up here. They're gonna turn brown on me out of the way. Otherwise. Yeah, I can do it while we're doing our battle. I don't think we're making it through tonight either way. Only try for the test. Take our first several apples here. We're gonna add some that lemon juice from that lemon. Since it's taking me a second here to chop all these. 
I don't want them to get too dark. They're already starting to turn. In fact, I'm just going to fork the lemon. Give that a little bit of a toss. Go back to cutting an apple. Let's see if this guy's usable. Oh, he's looking okay. I was worried he was going to be all bruised up and nasty. He's been sitting around in the kitchen for a little bit. It affects the taste. Um, it doesn't, it's not bad for you. Uh, oxidation in most things, it affects the flavor. Um, but it's not the end of the world. So like uh, with avocado, it starts turning dark. You can mix it in with the rest. It'll be a little bit more bitter. Won't be as good as that first day, but so you do want to prevent it. Um, and people do eat with their eyes, so we're gonna be cooking the apples, so there's a good chance they're gonna get a little brown, anyways, but. If I was doing something fancy here, people eat with their eyes. Well, at least these days, they order via Instagram. Yeah, I mean, it's how half of my people I know that are running restaurants these days or showing half their menu on Instagram and saying, hey, give us a call or order. Yeah. Hit us up on talk. And so many restaurants and all that are designed with, like, I'm thinking of one in particular where, uh, here in town, where they have a background and a logo and a scene like set for all of their stuff. Um, so, like, the whole thing, sort of like I use my cutting board and my knives and a lot of my food photos. Um, they have a set like probably patented or uh, copyrighted by the artist uh, artwork that they use as their backgrounds. Yeah. I haven't studied how talk works with businesses. Um, it being ran by, uh, or rather, my trust in the founders gives me more hope that it's a good platform but vast majority of these delivery services are junk they're just parasitic models that hurt whoever they're serving
talk being, like I said, I haven't looked and see what its setup is, but it was started by uh, owner of one of the top restaurants in the U.S., uh, Mr. Nick Kakonis. Sprinkle a quarter cup of sugar over these. Generous pinch of salt. Grab our topping out of the fridge here. All that bacon and butter and loveliness. All right, that's looking lovely. <coughs> have a good one, Kirby. Thanks for stopping by. Hope you have a great night. Let's get going with our frittata as well here. Well, we gotta get this in the oven. Let's put this in the oven. Debating reusing pans here. The person that owns 12 half sheet pans. I'm sitting here debating reusing pans. So sheet pan, lovely bacon and apple crisp going in the oven.
gonna give that good 30, 40 minutes here. We'll check on it after 30. I suspect it's probably going to be closer to 45 for everything to be wrapped up tonight. Tonight. So we need some bacon here for with our frittata. I think we should do a decent amount here since it is after all bacon day. See what this stuff's like. Have a feeling this is gonna be pretty tasty. Oh yeah. Hmm. Not bad. Hmm. That fat. Throw this in the fridge. Add all this in with our leeks over here. Next, I think I'm gonna do the vinaigrette here. So we have our reduced orange juice. Add 
got a couple of drops apple cider vinegar Placing characters on the field while asleep. <laughs> I did too. I'm probably not going to emulsion with this, but you can always hope. Nah, screw it. That ought to be good there. Hit of salt. Crack pepper. So we got that for our salad later. And we need our blue cheese and egg set up for our frittata. Gonna use up the rest of that, well maybe the rest of that, um, St. Auger Blue, which is good stuff. Good funky stuff. Look at all that fungus. So I'm gonna chop that up into little cubes here. Toss that with the egg. funky stuff I love it though it, it's got flavor and characteristics of just about no other cheese it's so soft it's perfectly spread I mean I could probably take my knife and just turn that into a spread here it's that soft it's a little bit like cutting pate here dicing butter. But yeah, it just all comes to one part. That's some good blue cheese, in my opinion. There, there's other good blue cheeses. I mean, I love me some, some Stilton, some Roquefort, but they're different cheeses. They, they have different 
purposes in life. This one is to let you know what the heck a blue cheese is. It's funky. It's got that cheese crystallization going on. Um, you, you know you're eating something other than milk. <laughs> This wasn't very well planned out though. I need room to break up the yolks. Welcome back, Entropy. What do you think? Three eggs? Four eggs? I'm gonna do four. You could probably do three and fill that pan, but... Oh, uh, what you've missed since then is, uh... We got blue cheese with eggs going here. This is gonna be the frittata. really should probably put the other I don't know I went to the smaller earpiece for this and they're a little bit more inclined to fall out but I thought the bigger one was making my ear ache a little bit but anyways um, so we got that we got that let's finish cleaning out our fruit and give this a try It's looking pretty. It's got a little bit more structure to it. I expected it, the fruit to be a bit softer. Yeah, that's looking. strong cantaloupe flair. Um, it's got almost um, a butteriness to it, but more of the butteriness that you get off like a white wine. It's, it's really cool. Yum yum. Glad you gave this to me. That's gonna be great. 
I was going to go right with dinner. Got another oh, 14 minutes here, 15 minutes here, till we do our first check on the crumble. And at that point, I'm going to start thinking about doing the frittata. I'll add our leavener in here along with our eggs at that point. This is still going to get, speaking of that, this is still going to get salt and it's going to get baking powder um, before we throw it in the warm pan back here. But we need that oven freed up a little bit want that crumble basically done before we throw the frittata in there because the frittata we're just finishing it and then we want to be done i wrap up the rest of this gorgeous bacon Throw this into the fridge. That was the blue cheese container out under view of that. Plate's too big though. You'll work. So we got leftover bacon. Three quarters of a pint of bacon fat and dinner tonight. Lovely. Minute 45 less for your last uh, characters on the field for the battle. definitely a lot firmer it's a good I've had small ones like that before that were just falling apart juice this is extremely flavorful maybe could have waited a day or two longer but great melon battle
Warrior Scrolls. Can I upgrade my warrior? I can. I can upgrade my flag bearer. Not my tank though. Tank's the only thing I sort of care about here is. Let's give a quick look at the store here. Rogue Scrolls, Archer Scrolls, Warrior, nothing for tanks. Okay, back to the map. And back to the cutting board. Hmm. Kapow! Who's got the doggy emote? The derp emote. Doggy derp. Doggy derp. Rather. <laughs> Not familiar with Sue Petito. That's gonna need that full time. It's looking pretty though. It was looking pretty when it went in though. I'm wondering what all I got. Because when I went and picked up packages, I think it, I was thinking I was only picking up a pack of bulk sugar. And there was three boxes there. I'm not gonna open up on stream because they got addresses all over them. Mysteries to be solved later on. Got to refill my hummingbird feeders too. I think one of them was actually buzzing my window like, Hey, give us more food. Welcome, Bibubs. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're waiting on. Uh, we've got apple crisp going in the oven. Got about another five minutes, so I'm doing my first check on that. We got uh, a uh, frittata started here. We got leeks and bacon waiting in the cast iron. We got. Eggs and 
same with St. Auger Blue and waiting for that. Did a quick little orange uh, juice vinaigrette. Gonna do a little salad on top of the frittata. Um, doing a little International Bacon Day. Uh, fortunately, I just put the bacon away, uh, but I, I just sliced up and a hunk of bacon about that big that I cured myself here at home. And so that's what I'm working with tonight. Don't have the luxuries of a dishwasher here, so I wash all my own dishes. How'd your, uh, rest your, how'd your hot dogs turn out? I don't remember what else you were doing earlier today. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I know you're doing sausages on stream all week. No, I was for some reason thinking you were doing the hot dogs today, but. Nice. I like the plate you did yesterday. Just nice, simple, all the things you want along with your sausage. I picked up some uh, nice small squash here for uh, Sunday. Gonna be doing that. I'm gonna be doing some asparagus. Uh, gonna be macadamia National Macadamia Nut Day. I'm I'm I went through and planned the entire month because Taz put up the uh, days. Gonna be doing. I don't remember if whether it's a flatfish. But I don't remember if it's a flounder or a halibut. And I'm going to crust it with macadamia nuts. And then I'm going to be doing uh, what could be a fail. We're going to try do a uh, roasted banana and macadamia nut pudding cake uh, for dessert. It's a Ethiopian, I think, recipe. Uh, so... And the pictures of it are not beautiful. <laughs> but we'll see if we can rescue it and make something cool. Um, I got one of each of them. I got a, uh, the, the typical candidates. I got, I got a small little uh, uh, yellow crook neck. A, uh, what I know is, it's probably politically incorrect, but Mexican squash, that half green, half what, yellow and uh, uh, small little zucchini. Not sure where the barriers is from because that's obviously not local right now. Uh, but it was organic. <laughs> and uh, don't do a ton of fish. I enjoy fish. I just don't think to really buy it or pick it up. It's not really my thing, I guess. And I was at the market this morning. I got my, I get my flowers there every other week. And when I was there, she gave me two of these guys. She's like, I got too many of them. Here, take them. So I've been sort of here munching on that. 
Wednesday's the small market, so not a ton to choose from today. Definitely not there, but starting to break down nicely there. I'm going to turn the oven up. Going from 350 to 400. We're back up to 400. I was doing 400 before for the bacon. Um, what else did I pick up here today? Um, that's about it. Uh, looking forward to that gonna be doing uh, my own take on a uh, ratatouille tart that I was thinking up uh, earlier that's gonna be later this month um, I got these guys earlier this month as a gift and picking up all sorts of uses I have the square and triangle ones I think already of aspect cutters But I think I'm gonna do a tart where I'm gonna sort of like the film, do the layered individual ones and fill one of the circles. And then I'm gonna wrap the entire circle, perhaps after baking it with pastry. Um, and I haven't decided if I wanna do it right side up or upside down, still thinking it through. But that's later this month. Uh, I don't normally plan things uh, this is sort of like COVID uh, is forcing me to plan ahead here. I normally just, I, would, I do Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, and my MO used to be you go to the farmer's market, see what's cool, let's make dinner. Um, now I have to go out and plan and buy ahead and organize. Ugh. But, uh, making the best of it and I've got this whole month planned out and so maybe we'll be a little bit more uh, ahead of schedule. Set another 10 minute timer here for that crisp. And once that gets up to temp, we'll do the frittata. No pith at all, just all s straight fruit to rind. I was saying before, really strong cantaloupe flavor. Not too sweet though. <laughs> I do love me some fresh melons. Um, she gave me this one and this guy. I'm not quite sure. She told me what variety they were when she handed them to me, but typical for me, went in one year out the other. So I get the impression you're up near Portland, 
which is cool. Um, thankfully, you don't have to deal with all the fires. <laughs> We're going to have 105 degree weather here in this upcoming week here. And no AC here. Don't want to open the windows because of the smoke. Could be an interesting week. Might, uh, eh, I'm not actually going to do that. I'm still going to be here and streaming. <laughs> I was going to say, might be a good time to go take a break, go on a vacation. But, no, I'm going to be here. It's been a little bit of a, I've been living here in Sonoma County for about a decade now. Actually, I've been living in this house for a decade now. But... We've, we've had a rough uh, four or so years here. Uh, we had two fires in Sonoma. We've had another smaller fire this year. And uh, a lot of smoke on top of that. It's got me uh, not too happy. Yeah, I, I got evacuated in October. Um, some of those late night... I, I was much more comfortable with these fires that were started by the thunderstorms. They were much more, okay, we know this is happening. We can plan for this. It's not like the last two major fires here in Sonoma were late night PG&E. Um, you know, travel 50 miles before morning. Those are the scary ones. The ones you can plan for. Sort of a... Take it with living here along with earthquakes and... All those other lovely things. I have other family that's... Been rather lucky here with the hurricanes, but... They have to plan for it with their lives. Tonight I don't have any wine with me. I normally do wine on Fridays and Sundays, or two to three out of the three nights. I'm gonna be doing this uh, Chardonnay here on Sunday. Or on Friday, sorry. Sunday's gonna be the caramels. back up, get our veggies warmed up, our leeks and bacon here, a little bit of butter, start warming that back up, add a little bit of leavener with our eggs just to cheat.
turn down the other mic there. And... Turned off the fan. No worries, folks. Thanks for stopping by. I apologize. It's not exactly a very happening time on stream here. Uh, but I uh, appreciate you stopping by. Bit of salt, a little fresh pepper, and throw that in the oven to finish off. got a frittata I just threw in the oven there and I uh, also got a, a apple crumble going it's International Bacon Day so we got all sorts of bacon in the house the uh, frittata is going to be leeks and bacon all you got to do is develop the transporter to get it from me to you and put me on the patent. All right. I'll, I'll keep a look up. Awesome, I actually catch the animation this time. Welcome, create mode. Thank you for the host. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We have all sorts of stuff chilling in the oven. Let's see what we got on our crumble. Crumble still needs a little bit longer. Going good. Got a, it's in the oven stream right now. We've got apple crumble with bacon and a Leek and bacon frittata. Both the frittata I just put down there. That needs another, oh, probably 10-ish minutes. And the uh, other guy's been in there. The crumble's been in there for a minute. But uh, it's a little bit of a thick boy. So it's taking a little while. Hopefully you're having a lovely evening. <laughs> What were we drawing tonight, or were we playing games? I have tried bacon vodka. Very few that I've actually liked.
Ryan? Oh, let's see. Gotta think up something good. Gotta think up something good. <laughs> Most of them are just smoky. Um, Ryan, I think bacon fat is a great substitute for skin moisturizer. And you should start using it that way. The, the whole smelling like bacon everywhere you go, it, it's just gonna help you out with the women. <laughs> we got a orange juice vinaigrette going on here I took a little took an orange juiced it reduced it in the stove and mix it with a couple of drops of vinegar and a bunch of olive oil not 100% emulsified but it's not emulsified at all, really, but... Oh, yeah. They love that greasy look. That that greaser hair. Great for your hair, too. Pocket bacon is amazing. Though... Pocket bacon is like actually an ongoing joke for th those big keto fans. Pocket bacon is actually like a thing. Um, they also do some keto diet. Don't don't do the keto diet. Uh, <laughs> um, the keto diet or the ketogenic is a diet where you essentially cut all carbs out of your life all carbs like not even a little bit you have to completely cut them out uh, it's you can eat as much protein as much fat as you want you can't eat carbos and what it's doing is it's starving your body of sugars forcing your body to live off of the fat sugars um, and it might work if you're like an extreme athlete or I, I I just don't recommend it but it's a thing I've got a couple of people that I know that are big into it and do posts and, you know, they have, I don't do coconut at all, but they do like these coconut, um, fat bombs. They're like coconut butter and cocoa and they just put them in the freezer and eat them as like snacks. And like I said, pocket bacon. <laughs> yeah. I mean, at the same time, one of them I do know who I don't think is really on the diet anymore. Um... Did use it to do and compete in Ironman competitions, but it's not like 
Yeah. Let's do our battle here and see what our Furtad is like. That rogue's going for that chest. That chest is going to kill that rogue. Ah, uh -huh, they, they traded. Yeah, I don't do. I I suspect that I'm allergic to coconut, or mildly, or I completely cut it out of my food, my diet, my uh, hair care and body products. <laughs> chest myth with the scroll we'll do one more map here but we're about ready to wrap things up here I may wrap this one up off stream oh where do we start let's go up here Yeah, Derry hasn't been treating me all that well either. Another couple minutes there on those. Those are both looking good though. I'm gonna give that frittata another five minutes which probably doesn't need a whole five. Um, but that crumble's looking nice. I'm not 100% sure, but something's been screwing with my stomach here for four or five years now. And it's probably dairy. I need more water. I'm just going through the water at night. up here so I have a bowl to use for salad. Of diets are junk though. I mean, a lot of them are designed to sell you things, and it's just not what you're after. I, the, the idea of, yeah, diet's the wrong word too, but um, the idea that I'm gonna join some subscription plan or, yeah. Um, that or their things packed with 
you know, GMO soy or something along that line. They're whatever the cheapest uh, protein powder they can find, which is soy. Um, I don't think, I mean, I overeat. I know I overeat. That's my problem. Well, that's one of my two problems. I overeat and I'm not active enough in my day. Um, but, um, as far as eating healthy, I think I do a pretty good job because I try and what I focus on heavily and sound like a broken record to regulars is I remove hands between the ground and my kitchen. Um, I want things process. I don't want things processed to remove ingredients. I don't want them stripped out. I don't want them. I want the real thing. Um, I don't want 50 different hands that one of them could have been contaminated. It's the more people that handle things, just the more. I mean, anyone that's sitting here looking at COVID. The more hands that you get between your food and <laughs> get rid of them. Stop buying meat from factories. But yeah. At the same time, buying, I, I, I complain about the subscriptions because it's an obvious sale. It's an obvious hook you in. Mentally though, it's not a horrible thing because I mean, I do that with my stream, you know, I'm here cooking. I got a schedule. I'm going to come back in here and do cooking for you guys. I'm not going to, I'm going to pull this for Todd out. Um, oh, good on timing anyways. That's looking okay. Give that a moment before we turn that guy over. Get that beautiful golden bottom. Yep, I've got my sort of like quarantine area between you, between camera and here, sort of my quarantine area. Um, I either put it on top of my chest freezer right here, where it hit, gets sunlight, or uh, goes in the fridge. I try and wipe down a lot of the stuff that goes in the fridge. There's only a certain amount that you can do. Let's see, what do I got that I can turn this out onto? I think I'm just going to use this guy. Excuse me a moment. That is stuck. <laughs> Thank you for the lurk, Ryan. Cast iron is stuck. It's all that cheese. Uh. 
I don't know if that's coming out. See if we can Not quite a clean job. I have done better. That special I just needed, just used. A little bag to arugula because I couldn't find. The nice stuff at the market today. that up with a little bit of our orange vinaigrette. A little salt and pepper while we're at it too.
do a little photo of that. Let's take a look at our crumble and see if that's done here. That's looking lovely. Oh yeah. You can hear that too. Give you guys a close up on that side bubbling. That's gonna have to sit and I'll have to give you guys a photo of that a little bit later. As always, photos of everything are going to be up on the Instagram. I'll put a couple of things on Twitter. Everything on Discord. Got another 14 minutes on our battle here. See what we got going on here in the Twitter world. Why don't we go uh, raid Minnesota Taz? He's uh, raiding Curry's after Curry Reek here with. Uh, John, um, I'm going to wrap up this last battle after the stream here. Ooh, Urk Raid. Raid. Urk, ERC. Urk. <laughs> welcome, 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 welcome. Hi, everyone. Uh, you're just catching me wrapping up here. We've got a uh, bacon and leek frittata here. Um, perhaps not my finest work with frittatas, but it's going to be plenty tasty and got a nice golden brown to it. Bottom. We got some arugula with a orange. Uh, vinaigrette and lastly here we have grab two towels here to show you guys and apple crumble made with bacon it is International Bacon Day, if you guys are not familiar. And so, the bacon for both this crumble and this frittata, which I don't know if you guys can see the frittata there or not, um, was cured off of the pig that I butchered here on stream. So, Got some beautiful photos of bacon here. Those are gonna be going up there for uh, that. What were you up to tonight, ERC? What, what, what are we making these days? What, what's new in the Leathercraft world? Nice. Well, glad to see you back here. Thank you for the raid. But uh, just as you guys were coming in here, 
I was just about to say, I'm gonna go and raid Minnesota Taz. Um, so if you guys aren't familiar, hi, I'm Jason. I will be back here on Friday. I cook on Twitch, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday nights, starting 4.30 Pacific time. Uh, always changing up what I'm doing. Typically buying stuff fresh from the farmer's markets. Nice, beautiful food. Uh, I'm going to go and enjoy this loveliness. Uh, thank you guys for joining me. Let's get that raid going. Cool. Um, so thank you all for joining me. As usual, everything going up on the Instagrams and the Discord. Let's see if I can't raid this already. Let me raid. It's not showing me the raid properly on AMI stuff here Well, eventually this will go. <laughs> Thank you all for joining me. I hope you all have a great night. Should have gone through. It's showing up. Oh, there are. It's showing as though we raided here. Let's hope that it did. <laughs> 